Welcome to episode four of my podcast. I'm going to talk to you about dieting because it can be one of the most frustrating and difficult things we will ever do. I speak from experience because just losing five kilos for me when I was in my late 30s took me two years. I was so reliant on chilies and spicy food. And the more of that I had, the more rice I had to have. And trying to cut it down even by 10% took me that long. While everyone said, just cut the rice out. I didn't listen. But the moment came for me when I was in the dressing room of a department store trying on my jeans. And to my horror, I couldn't fit in to a 10 and had to go for a 12. And I said to myself, if this goes on, I'm going to move to size 14 very quickly. So that was the moment that I decided I would have to do something about my eating habits. A diet would have never worked for me, and I don't think it ever works for anyone. And much as I hate this word sustainable, it is because diets are not sustainable. Except if you want to lose five kilos in 10 days for a special outfit you want to wear, you take away your food, you have these meal replacement protein shakes, which you have twice a day. And if after 10 days, you are not sick of it, you will continue and you will lose up to five kilos. And after that, who cares? You're fitting into your outfit. Now, there are many reasons why diets fail. Most of the time, the foundation of your health is never talked about. Every diet plan I have seen and the people I speak to who have been on diets have never been told that the most important thing to give you that start of feeling good about yourself is to have more fresh vegetables at the right time with the right combinations. That is very important. If we neglect this, we are actually neglecting the microbiomes in our colon, which have to be fed. They have to have that amount of microbiomes to give you this health. You have to feed them. If not, the food that you have been told you should eat, we should all know about. But this important element is missing. Another important thing is we come from so many different cultures. We have our preferences for food. Living in Singapore, I know very well what people like to eat and what they don't like to eat. And this applies to all of us. We have families and we can't possibly tell them, today you're not gonna have this, that or the other, you're gonna have what I'm having because I'm going on a diet. If you have a problem with trying to accommodate better eating habits with what you and your family love to cook, please email me and I will give you some advice on this. The other thing is, how do you feel about starting on a diet? Are you mentally fit? Are you stressed? Do you have family problems? Do you have personal problems? All this impacts how you approach your eating. If you just start like I did because of this book I read 50 years ago, the salads, are the best thing to kickstart both your body health and your mental health. You will not know how good they feel and how good you will feel after you have at least two or three salad vegetables before your dinner. And it doesn't take long to do. It's simple. And yet, every magazine I read Every person who tells me what they have to eat are all in the form of smoothies. You buy a blender, you mix everything up. That's not going to be with you for the rest of your life. But the fruit market is there and you can buy these fruits 
every day, whenever you like. No machines or no gadgets, you don't need them. And it infuriates me. Weight Watch clinics give you workshops, buddy systems, meetings, telling you, encouraging you, motivating you. How long are you going to do this? On the other hand, while they're doing this and seemingly being concerned about how you're going to lose weight and making sure you meet your targets, they are selling you pre-packed foods. Somehow I think this word is coming to our lives all too easily, and it's convenience. Convenience is what is told to us. It's so easy, just buy this. It's all meticulously prepared in our kitchens to give you the proper balance of your protein, your starches, and whatever it is that they put in. But really, it's not fresh, it's expensive. Can you go on buying this forever? Well, unless you're super wealthy and you don't really care, you will rely on these foods or eat out at expensive restaurants. And you know what? No matter how wealthy and how much money they spend, they're still unhealthy. Because again, it's the colon. Please listen and put that in your head. It's nothing else. It's simple. And yet, we ignore this. And <laughs> getting over my anger, we are being led deceitfully with advertising, trying to make it look easy by just taking a pill. So the most important thing you do before you take these pills or supplements, and before you even start on any diet, is to have a proper medical checkup and a full blood test. Then you will know if you are deficient in anything that you will need to have before you go on a diet. It's no point starting on anything that is a change of your habits or your routine unless you know that you are well inside. And if you are not, it can be fixed. Of the many books I have read, there's a few new ways that are on offer or are told for you that you can do to try and reduce your weight. One of them is intermittent fasting. It's become quite popular. I've seen and talked to people who do this. The important thing here is to make sure you are fit enough to go through this diet because it means eight hours without food, or five hours without food, or even up to 12 hours without food, just drinking and then eating normally. And when people say eating normally, I don't really know or understand what they mean by eating normally. Does it mean they try and balance their convenience foods with this fasting? Because it won't work. You need to have a proper balance of what you're eating to make sure that whatever diet you are on is going to work. So intermittent fasting might work for you, but again, are you going to do it for the rest of your life? Secondly, there's gastric banding. And yes, some of the results are quite impressive. People lose a lot of weight quickly, but their food regime, when and how they eat, is impacted because they have done things in your stomach and you may not be able to eat the quantities that you were eating, which is maybe a good thing, but you have to be careful, especially six months after the surgery, and it may last for many, many years. It's an option if you have enough money, and if you are not concerned about going through surgery. With gastric banding also, the results might be good at first, but if you're not switched on to what you really should be eating, you can go back to the old ways and you could even put back all that weight. So think about this, give it a lot of thought. Why isn't it more widely talked about that 
we should all have our normal amounts of fiber and water coming from fresh fruit and vegetables. I realize that there's no money in advertising lettuce or carrots, no matter how wonderful they are for your health. But there's more money in saying that they are plant compounds in this pills from our orchards and from our plantations, and we have put some in this pill. Now, if you think about it, if they did do that, it would only be one or two percent. The rest are chemicals. And if you had a blood test, you would know what you're deficient in and you would know if you need certain vitamins or minerals. So you will not need to buy these pills. And I think it is so unethical. I feel like screaming at people who do this. It is commercialized now. Realize this. You don't need to spend money to lose weight. So are you prepared to make the change. With little steps, you can. You don't need to go to great lengths trying to sort out and prepare the foods that you are supposed to eat during the day. All you need to understand, again, is to keep your colon healthy. Because the colon, although it's not a word that people like, it sort of has um, a kind of a distasteful uh, feeling about it. So they're using the word gut. So let's talk about your gut then. It is only that because your gut and your microbiomes control the way you think, the way you act, how you look. It feeds your organs, your cells, your glands, your hormones, your skin. And I can see it in people's faces. I can see whether they're not well, whether they're happy, whether they're stressed, or whether they just need someone to talk to. And the reason is so simple. We need to do the fundamentals. If you don't exercise, you are also putting a gap on how much weight you can lose. Staying on the right food program without moving, it won't make your diet successful. You need to move, you need to exercise. Muscle strength has a lot to do with weight gain. If you have weak muscles, then what you eat, the glucose and sugars, if they have nowhere to go, if they can't feed your muscles, if your muscles are not strong enough, it will go into your blood system and that causes an insulin deficiency if you eat too much starches and sugar. When you build your muscles with resistance training, there'll be such a great difference in the way you approach your day and the way you think. It is a whole new avenue that we haven't yet explored. We're thinking, like I did, why go to the gym? I don't want to build muscles. But it's not about building muscles, it's building strength. It's creating energy. You need the energy to improve your metabolism. A lot of my friends are doing Zumba, but Zumba doesn't build muscles. They are more of a heart health exercise. If you do Zumba, if you dance a lot, that's great because that enforces your life. It makes you happy, which is important. I know people who are in their 80s and even 90s who have such a good life because they have good friends, they have a supportive family, and they like going out. Now, they might not even eat what I'm telling them to eat, but they're having a good time. Now, that is important as well. And who knows, it may not be just your genes, it may not be because you are getting older, it can be a lot of things that cause diseases and make people reliant on drugs. It is holistic if you want to use that word. Mind, body, digestive system, colon, they're related and doing the right things is part of a diet. I have heard this a lot. 
when someone says, I have a balanced diet. I think what they mean is having a balance between healthy food and keeping commercial interests in fast food and packaged foods happy. So when I hear this, I'm sort of a little bit afraid to ask, can you tell me what your balanced diet is like? But when I do and I hear what they say, I am totally appalled. But maybe you will never be as obsessive as I am. I have a great life. When I go out, I don't have alcohol only because a few sips would probably make me either fall asleep or be too up in the air and not enjoy myself. And a lot of people said, you can't enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. Have a drink. Have a Coca-Cola or have a lemonade. I said, but I don't want it. I don't crave it. I am happy being with people and talking, and I have a good time. And the other part of it is, when I go out for dinner, I'm also careful with what I eat. Not because I am fussy, I will eat what's there, but I'll make sure I have either a carrot, a fennel, some lettuce or celery before I go out. And you know something? I want you to feel what I feel when I have this. This is the key. This is never mentioned, and that upsets me. So if you get it in your head, dieting is all about keeping your colon well. It's so simple. It's too simple, maybe. Maybe I should charge you for this because people are paying so much for rubbish and I can't understand why. Is it because it's because whoever is on social media who you're watching on TV seems to be so excited about what, what they're eating and what you should buy? That's not really caring about you. Think before you part with your money. This book, Longevity, by Luigi Fontana, is a very good book. And on some of the pages, he talks about when people complain about being ill and the excuse is, well, it's old age. Well, I smoked and drank all my life and I can expect this. Oh, it's my genes. My parents had high blood pressure and diabetes, so I have it. It's not totally correct. We can, at whatever age, change what we are feeling now and what we want to do to improve. You can do this. You don't need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm a failure, I can't do this, I'm disappointed, I never succeed. We never succeed in everything we do. There's always starting and stopping. There's always a problem with our self-image every time we fail. But think about it. If you don't fail, that means you haven't started. Failure is something you need to accept. I accepted it for 10 years and sometimes even more because I love trying new things and I know if I don't try them, I will think about it for a long time after and said, I should have done this. And it, when you do things that are different, you will fail. Things never go according to plan. But there's a key to this. It's a key that I have learned. Persistence, perseverance, and patience. The three Ps, especially when you are aiming to lose weight. And as I said, it's difficult and it's hard in the beginning. So if you think of these three Ps and you tell yourself, I have been like this for X amount of years. What have I got to lose if I start? And if I stop and start again, so what? If you really are set on achieving this goal, and honestly, no one can force you to do it. You need to decide 
and say, this is my time, this is when I want to start, and I'm prepared to fail, but I also will pick myself up and start again. No big deal. Give yourself at least that credit that you can think objectively about your goals. So to end, and I don't know if I will ever end on this subject, because I wish you could feel what I feel. Tomorrow, I'll be 75. A lot of people think, you don't look it. Why don't I look it? I have kept my weight constant for 20 years. When I do go away or on a cruise, and yes, I will try lots of food, and I may put on a couple of kilos, but at the same time, I make sure I walk four kilometers around the deck every day. Being 75 is not really great. We don't ever look forward to growing old, but you will get old. And I know what it is to be young, and I know what it is to be old. If you're younger and you're doing everything you want to do and think you're the protected species because of your youth, you will get old. So your life will change as the years go on. You don't want to be on a conveyor belt to oblivion. You want to be on the path to feeling good. And yes, maybe we need a bit of luck as well. It's all to do with your colon, folks. So simple, so easy. Please try a little of what I've told you to do and let me know how you feel. I want you to feel as good as I am. I'll see you soon in episode five.